Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Merukim Abahim to everybody. Today, Friday, Adam Shabbat Kodesh Perashat Emor. Today, the 27th day of the Omer, corresponding to the 12th day of Iyar, the 13th day of uh, May 2022. Today's class and special breakfast, graciously sponsored by Mr. Glenny Elia and family, the Eloi Nishmat, his beloved grandmother, Rahel Ben Batrika Aleha Shalom, additionally sponsored as well by Eli Levi, the Eloi Nishmat, his beloved father, Yom Tov Ben Antun Halevi Alev Shalom. Also, today's class, graciously dedicated by Yael and Manuel Salem for the Refua Shalema of her beloved father, Ishaq Ben Flora, among the Holim of Am Israel, as well as Refua Shalema for Aharon Ben Hatun and Zipporah Bad Esther. There's a couple of topics that I'd like to discuss today. And first, a halakhic reminder that this coming Shabbat Sunday will be Pesach Sheni and the Hilula of Rebbe Meir Baal Hanes. So Be'ezat Hashem, this coming Sunday, we'll have a nice breakfast, we'll have matzah, the way the tradition writes, and we'll discuss about the powerful day which Pesach Sheni and the Hilula of Rebbe Meir Baal Hanes is all about. A halakhic reminder that even uh, for the many of us that on Mosai Shabbat or Sunday, we are going to be eating matzah, which is not a mandatory requirement. It's only a beautiful, cute tradition. No more than that, we follow the tradition that we say mezonot on the matzah and not hamosi. Although in the week of Pesach we do say hamosi, but that's obvious reason because it's about Pesach. But Pesach Sheni, it's a godly given opportunity to Am Israel to remedy mistakes of the past, but we'll save Pesach Sheni and the Hidula for Sunday morning. In the meantime, we'll continue with the Omer lesson. 27th day of the Omer, Moshe Rabbeinu alav shalom welcomes Yosef HaSaddiq. That's why the Midah of today, it's called Yesod Sheba Nesach. Yesod in English means foundation. And Nesach, as we learn, means eternity, means victory, etc. Yosef HaSaddiq represents physically the area between the legs of the person. In the men's department, it refers to the Ben Milah. In the ladies' department, it refers to family purity. And taken care of, meaning to say, when a man lives a holy life, and when I mean holiness at this moment, I'm not referring praying, I'm not referring learning, I'm not referring eating, I'm not referring working, even though each one of these examples do carry a certain aspect of holiness, but the whole essence of Kedusha of a person is connected to the sanctity of the very Milah. So it comes the message of today, and it says as follows. We have, for example, in Argentina, one of the most famous uh, institutions, it's called Yesod Hadad. That's where we went to the Kitab Lavage, for those who are from Argentina. Why is it called Yesod Hadad? Yesod is connected to the Sefirah of today, the foundation of religiosity. That's the meaning of Yesod Hadad. So it says the Sefirah of today that in the life of a Jew, there are many areas which is connected to matters which determine the foundation of godliness of a Jew. One of them, Shabbat. Another one, Yom Tov. Another one, Rosh Chodesh. Even though that these are three different patterns in time, Shabbat weekly, Rosh Chodesh monthly, and holidays sporadically, 
but they make up the foundation of a Jew. And now you can't expect a person to be a Shomer Shabbat if they never observe Shabbat, or they never celebrated the Shabbat. That's one example. Another one, for example, the Mizrah of Tefillin. Tefillin, it's called Ot. Ot means a signal, a covenant, a pact between Am Israel and Akadosh Baruch Hu. Now, that's why on Shabbat, we don't put on Tefillin. Why? Because Shabbat is an Ot, a covenant. Shabbat, Mila, it's a covenant, and Tefillin is a covenant. So the Pasuk writes, Al pi Yakum Dabar. I need to have two witnesses. Six days a week, I have Tefillin and Berit Mila. Once a week, I have Shabbat and the Berit Mila. The Berit Mila never leaves the person's life. You know, the Gemara tells a story about David Amelech, Alam Shalom, that once he went to the bathhouse and then he started to think, look, I'm taking a bath and I am naked. Although, usually when a person takes a bath, he's naked, but that's not what he was referring to. He was referring to naked of his own. He says, I don't have a kippah, I don't have a talit, I don't have a sisi, I don't have a tefillin. You cannot even talk words of Torah in the bathroom or in the bathhouse, but then suddenly he remembered, hold on, I have the Berit Milah. Upon this he composed the Mnaseya Halashemimit Mismor Ledavir, chapter 6, I believe, of the book of Tehillim. David Amelech expresses his thankfulness to Hashem, always having the presence of Akadosh Baruch Hu in our life. As we say in the Birkat Amazon, if you look in the second paragraph of the Birkat Amazon, what do we say? Your covenant that you sealed in our skin, in our flesh. So we see here how the prayer of the Birkat Amazon connects Torah learning with the Berit Mila, Yosef Asadik and Moshe Rabbeinu. So this second paragraph of the Birkat Amazon has a direct connection to this day, number 27 of Sefirat HaOmer. As we may have mentioned this in the past, foundation is essential. Let's say a person wants to build something, correct? As much as you spend on the decoration, on the technological aspect of the construction, there is a hidden cost that is not negotiable. And this cost is called the pilings, the foundation. Sometimes you have to invest a lot on the foundation that we just did for the waterfront terrace. If you look at the waterfront terrace, you see a new seawall. That new seawall needed to be updated for the expansion. Why? Because the original seawall was built in the year 2000. The code of building, the building code, between two, the year 2000 and 2022, especially with the surf site, unfortunate tragedy, everything has been upgraded and tweaked. So we needed to install, I believe, 24 pilings on that. And don't ask me how much each piling cost. So five figures, each one. And I'm not talking about 10,999. Go a bit higher. Higher, much higher. So you have already half a million dollars in an expense that you don't even see it. And if you're not willing to do that, you can do nothing else. Condition. That is the foundation in spirituality. Now translate whatever example I gave you on the terrace, now translate that into spirituality. A person, you know, sometimes people want to go out on a date. And one of the few questions that I always ask, besides making sure that they are Jewish, in a proper way, it's important. You have to ask that also today. True story. This happens weekly, without fail. 
you know, if it doesn't happen by us, then a rabbi calls me and he says, Rabbi, I have a shidduch, somebody from Miami, but can you please do the research? If it happened two days ago with Mexico, you know. I called Mexico uh, last Monday, Mexico called me on uh, Wednesday night, says, please, we need you to do some research. I tell them the same thing. Anybody that I don't know, that we don't know, that we have no records of them in our synagogue, and nobody really met them in the past, etc. The first thing is, fill up an application. Let me confirm who you are in the sense of kasher, and then we can talk about to do a bar mitzvah, to do a wedding, to do a milah, etc. Okay? But one of the things that I do ask after I get a happy answer, Baruch Hashem Rabbi, and I try to have all these answers in writing, everything kasher a thousand percent, etc. Then I move on to the next level. Okay, tell me about your spiritual level. I'm not going to set up someone that has kasher, mikveh, and, 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 and shabbat with someone who doesn't do nothing. And don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Sometimes, no, she will grow. He will grow. I Amen. But you cannot take that to the bank. If the person as daily is somehow going to a Torah class and is becoming connected with someone, etc., and hopefully that person will start to grow, that's beautiful. But when there is nothing and you have something, something will happen. Something will happen. In what sense? That usually the gravitation is unfortunate. And that's the message of the Sefirah of today. It says there are certain things which are not negotiable. There is a foundation that every Yehudi must have. Otherwise, how can you develop? In other words, you want to marry someone, and she says, okay, I agree to go to the mikveh one time before I get married. So what happens afterwards? How are you going to bring children to the world? You're going to sleep in separate bedrooms or separate beds for the rest of your life? For this you get married? So we need to think. Is she condemned? We need to think what? Is she condemned to death? Is this only what I want to do? If, she, if this is the ultimatum she gives you, then you got to think about yourself and about your future. And again, for those watching live via itorah.com or our holy audience in front of us, I'm only throwing this on the table just to create an awareness of the message of today. It says, Yesod, the foundation, Nesa, can give you eternal success. But if God forbid the foundation is shaky or is weak, what happens? Any vibration, which this is what's happening today. You heard the settlement in Surfside? For $1 billion, right? 997 million. I don't think that's enough if you're asking me, because the value of human life is, is priceless. Okay, but at least give him something. But the whole Megillah is vibration from the next door building, literally a few feet away, different city, Miami Beach and Surfside are separated by maybe less distance than us and the building across the street. So the Shukhan Aruch on this side of the street is one way, on the south side, on the north side is different. Now they are saying that the high rise, which is much higher than Surfside allowed, than Surfside allowed caused the migration and everything that happened, you know, it has a domino effect. Plus shaky foundation, neglected foundations, whatever that happened with the wood, pool and the water, what happened? Khalas. That's the sefirah of today. The sefirah of today is if you want to have a long time benefit and effect in your life, your foundation needs to be strong. If it's strong, we have chances of survival. Because Nessa, as I learned yesterday, we learned yesterday, means success. 
I want to succeed in my life. I don't want to be failure in my life. And when I mean succeed in my life, I'm not talking about physically or professionally. I want to continue in the traditions of my parents, in the tradition of my grandparents, in the tradition of my great-grandparents. And everyone else, I think, that has more or less the same idea and concept uh, of life. And it says as follows, that the Zohar Kadosh explains that part of Avodat Hashem is besides having a good foundation in the life of the person, continuity must be part of who we are. In other words, allow me to explain this, that sometimes a person has a spark of holiness and wants to do a beautiful deed, that's excellent. But the problem with that statement is sporadically. Sporadically means what? That happens occasionally. Okay, that occasionally the person wants to do something nice, chazaku varu. But the Zohar Kadosh says, doing good and doing nice, it's something that needs to be part of our daily exercise. You can't say, okay, Monday and Wednesday, I try with a seatbelt. Sunday, because it's a day off, no seatbelt. Does it make sense? Hazak Obaro. One more point, he says, Ben Adam la Habero. In our interpersonal relationship, it says, as much as we gave a few moments of introduction to the level of personal holiness of the person themselves, only of the person themselves, as the aspect of family purity in marriage, and the Berit Mila in the men's department, and obviously single ladies preserving their holiness and godliness, but there is one more aspect of life that has to do with another person, our fellow men, Ben Adam Lahavero, interpersonal relationship. We already touched on this subject, especially in honor of the days of Omer, the unfortunate student's situation with Rabbi Akiva. The Gemara writes that they fail to respect each other. And there are many ways of explaining that Gemara that is so simple, easy to understand, but is so deep, and the many questions that we may have. But here it says, one of the basic foundations of the person's life is how does the person speaks? How the person speaks with another person? The Gemara in Bechorot says, Kol mina tahor, tahor. What does it mean? Anything that comes out from a creation, let's say an animal, that is tahor, let's say meat, you can have meat. Why you can have meat? Because the source of the meat is the cow, and the cow is kosher. You can have milk, because the milk is kosher, but you cannot have camel's milk, even though milk is milk, and comes from an animal, but it's a difference. The camel is taref, and the cow is kosher. So far, so good? So far, so good. Let's move now to the next level. A person opens their mouth. You open your mouth and the person starts talking. There are people who talk very nice, very respectful, very tactful, very nice, very clean, proper. But there are people, unfortunately, that when they speak, they need filters. Like air conditioning needs a filter. <laughs> this fellow needs a filter. Why? 
because they talk with so much debris. They don't have derecheres, they don't have etiquettes, they don't have mitot tohot. But you know what the Sefirov today says? A person who speaks in such a way, Nibulpe, vulgarity, profanity, etc., it's a sample that his inner soul needs also attention. Shalomu Amelech says similar concept about anger. Shalomu Amelech says, Rav Hema, or Rav Hema, Rav Pasha. The faster a person gets angry, the more Averot they do. They don't have a defense mechanism. So because they are so much connected to the yes and Ara, so anything makes them tick. But if a person has the Rechedes, and a person has a bit of Irachamai, and a person makes the effort to develop Midot Tovot, so automatically, the way you want to conduct yourself with another person is going to be in a much more calmer, refined, respectful way. And believe me, I have people from both sides of the spectrum. But I will tell you, thank God, the majority follows the good criteria. But occasionally we come across individuals who they need to be polished, polished spiritually. And the way that spirituality gets fixed is also through the power of speech. So therefore it says, Kol tahor. The words that come out from someone that is tahor, that is nice and proper, tahor. I'm not expecting, that's, I'm not going to put you on the camera for security reasons, obviously. Okay? But I know that when I talk to you, I know that, that's why I'm not turning the camera. I'm going to put it very, okay? I know when I talk to you, you are a person, Baruch Hashem, with the Rejeres, and I mean, you know, proper, respectful. So I'm not ever experiencing myself that a, a, a foul word will come out. And that's what the Gemara says. Whoever comes out from, I'll tell you, in, in, in Spanish there is a statement that says, El pez muere por su boca. You know what that means in Spanish? The fish dies by its mouth. Yeah. So according to this Gemara, the person is the fish. The mouth can give me a sample of what type of person I'm dealing with. And therefore it says that sanctity is not limited to the Berit Mila, but sanctity is also connected to the power of the Dibur. Which, remember one thing that we learned a while back. One of the basic differences between a human being and an animal is that humans are able to talk, to communicate. They are able to think. They are able to make a decision. In other words, the person has the freedom of choice to make a decision. And we can talk in all languages that are available. In other words, you are being a human being and born, let's say, in America, doesn't mean that the only language you can speak in your life is only English. You can learn Spanish, Portuguese, Hebrew, Arabic, whatever language. That's a faculty that Akadosh Baruch Hu gave the humans over the animal kingdom. But, but God forbid, when a person doesn't speak in a proper way, it shows one additional deficiency. This is brought down in the name of the Hafez Haim. We know that the Hafez Haim, a great rabbi who created a revolution in the world when it comes to the topic of Shemirat al Lashon, guard your tongue, how do we speak? By the way, I must say this openly. The Hafez Haim wasn't the one who initiated this campaign. 
this campaign, it's written in the Torah. This campaign, it's written in the Torah. But what happens? Through the years and through the centuries, we perhaps paid attention to one aspect of Godness, mostly in our relationship with God, but we forgot our human interactive level of relationship. And that's why when it comes to the aspect of Sefirata Omer, every day we have Ben Adam La Makom, my godly relationship, Ben Adam La Havero, our personal relationship, and then I have Ben Adam Le Atzmo. Now it's me, myself, and I. So what did the Hafez Haim do? And thanks to him, without any hesitation, the world is becoming more and more and more aware of how actions of Mahila, words, also have an effect in the life of the person. But you know what the great Hafez Haim writes, and I believe this is sourced in the name of the Zohar Kadosh, that it says, a Mila, Mila. When I say the word Mila, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Circumcision. But you know what the Hafez Haim says? There is another word that also it said in Hebrew, Mila. Word. Mila. So the Hafez Haim seems to imply the mouth and the Berit Mila are connected directly. That's why both of them face forward in the front part of the human body. That's what's written in the holy books. And how is the Berit Mila? It sends a signal of holiness to my mouth. And if my mouth is not holy, maybe there is a spiritual issue with the Berit Mila. Wow. In other words, the safety net, the safety net of holiness has been breached. And how do I know this? By the vocabulary you use. Wow. I know. Welcome to Miami, Safra Synagogue. <laughs> no, I know people. <laughs> this is the message of today. Let's continue. This is only the introduction. <laughs> relax, relax. I know it's Arab Shabbat. I said planning what to do today, but is that the shame? But let's do three more short point messages. Yesterday, we mentioned about gratitude. Oh, the app. Today, we'll talk about eternal effects. Who the person marries, it's like a chapter in history. I marry my wife, my children marry their husbands or their wives based on the gender, and this gives generation after generation. So far, so good. Door le door. One generation to the other. It says, but there are also situations that a person must leave a marking in the world. There are many ways of leaving a mark in the world. Some people develop medicines, they find, they discover something that the world benefits from it. But I'm going to downsize to the world. But now the message of today talks about the concept of a person doing something spiritually. For example, you see on the walls, you see the signage, you see we remembering. Now, why do we do this? In a way, this action of today, or any plaque that you see on the wall, you see etc. 
You know what it's doing? According to the Sefirah of today, we are engraving their name for eternity. We're not forgetting about them. And that's why in our religion, in our traditions, traditions, right? There is so much matters connected le'ilui nishmat. In the elevation of the soul. If it's a Kaddish, if it's the Ashkaba, or if it's the class, or if it's the delicious breakfast that we are enjoying today. And why do we do this? Because this brings an extension and a continuity to a Neshama. I ask you a question. With the exception of the sponsor of today, class and breakfast, anybody knew Rahel Batrifka or Yom Tov Ben Altun? I don't remember meeting them. Maybe you. Okay, maybe you. But, you know, we don't know, okay, obviously. But we don't know them. But yet, even though we don't know them, and we don't need to know them, but we understand that the neshama, the soul of the person, after they leave the world, and I don't like to use the word death, because that's not the way I like to speak. But death, and that's the only way I know how to say it, has the shalom. From a spiritual perspective, it's a transition to give life to the neshama without strings attached. During the lifetime of the person, the physical lifetime, the body and the neshama are encapsulated with each other. And that's why we say le'ilui nishmat. Le'ilui nishmat. To elevate the soul, not to elevate the body. Because the body is secondary to the soul. Even though the body, with, with the soul without the body, has no purpose, because it has no way of magnifying itself to the potential that a person is given to deliver by Hashem. But remember the Gemara in Masechet Nida. Shelosha Shutafim Yesh Ba'adam. How do you make a baby? Don't answer me. Okay? But it's an investment. You invest. The, the husband invests the Zera. The wife invests her womb. It, that creates the X and the Y, whatever, and it becomes suddenly a baby. Hashem says, you put the initial down payment, I supplement the mortgage. That's it. I supplement the mortgage. And that's why the Gemara writes, certain things of the child, life, physical, and all aspects follows the father. Certain aspects of the child's life follows the mother. But Hashem puts the microchip, the battery, which is the neshama, inside of this child, and that's how the body can become functional. Fast forward, 120 years later, Hashem comes back, and what does he say? I want my investment back. That's the meaning of life. Hashem takes my investment, the neshama goes to where it came from, the body goes down wherever the body came from, but now the neshama came to the world. And as the Baal Shem Tov writes, sometimes a neshama comes down to the world for a handful of missions. A handful of missions. And you live 70, 80, 90, 100 years, like Rabbi Chaim Kalevsky said, and I may have mentioned this in the week of the Shiva, that one day was a very busy day for him. And when I mean busy, I'm sure he was busy every moment of the day, but he had visiting hours that people used to come to the great rabbi to get an advice for a blessing. And as the years went by, he was perhaps one of the most, uh, one of the hachamim that people sought 
the, his blessing and advice probably from the top ten of the world, literally. Of course, there many, many, every generation has its own a group and badge of Sadiqim, obviously. The Rebbe passed away over 30 years ago. But when he was alive, many people used to go and get a blessing, get a dollar, etc. Today people go to the oil. But to some people, they want to see a living person. So one day after the rabbi finished, his secretary closed the door so nobody else comes in. The rabbi says, go see if maybe somebody needs to talk to him before you lock the door. The secretary says, I look, nobody's there. The rabbi says, do me a favor, go back and make sure that nobody's there. The secretary went, he went all the way down, and he saw nobody was coming into the property. Hacham, nobody's there. Later on in the day, the secretary of Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, Alev Shalom, asks him, Hacham, I told you once that nobody was there. Why didn't you send me again to check? He says, you need to know that maybe, and this is Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky saying this, maybe the gift of life that God is giving me is not based on my, uh, how do I say, merit. Maybe God is giving me a lease in life to be able to help another Jew. And he lived 94 years old. And he was lucid till the last day. Because his passing was sudden. None of us heard that anything was going on. Maybe the night before wasn't feeling well. But there was no Tehillim campaign and, and, you know, nothing. Nothing was done. And then suddenly, left the world. He overcame uh, Corona. Baruch Hashem. <coughs> At uh, 93 years old. Yes. And again, and that's why we do Netzah. This is Netzah. We are eternalizing the memory of a person to a physical action, because the food is physical. Everything is physical, but the content, and the Berachot, and the Ashkaba, and the Kaddish, and the, we're gonna say in a moment, everything that we do is to connect the past with the future. This is, in summary, the message of today's Sefirah. Iratzon, that to the words of Torah Berachot, Elevate the Neshamot of Rahel, Bat Rivka, Alea Shalom, and as well as the Neshama of Yom Tov Halevi Ben Altun. May the Neshama have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. We wish everybody to have a beautiful Shabbat Kodesh, whatever you may be. Just a friendly halachic reminder that since on Sunday we are going to be saying Yehishem because of Pesach Sheni. So our tradition is that tomorrow, Minha, we don't say Sitkatha, we say Yehishem as well, the way the Lecha writes uh, prior to any specific day. Shabbat Shalom, Mevorach, Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen Be'Amen. Rebi Hananiah Ben-Akashi Omer, Shabbat. Atzah Kadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakot Et Yisrael, Lefi Chach.